The CPU, or the central processing unit, is the key to your computer system. We've got two main manufacturers listed here. I've got Intel and AMD. They are the two most common chip manufacturers that are out there and that you should familiarize yourself with. With Intel, we had our original chip, which was the 8086, and it had a speed of 8 megahertz, a bus size of 16, and it had a cache of 0. When we refer to the data bus, it refers to the wires that carry data to and from the processor. And usually the wider the better. When we refer to cache memory, this is um, a high-speed block of SRAM that interacts between the CPU and the system RAM. When we look at the clock speed, this is the rate that the processor executes instructions. Usually the faster the better. And then we have the Intel chips in the front here and the AMD chips uh, just below. So as we were looking at earlier, Intel started with its original 8086 chip. It progressed to the 8286 chip and we see the progression between the 286 to the 386 computers, the 386 to a series of 486 computers starting with the 486SX with a speed of either 20 megahertz, 25 megahertz, or 33 megahertz and the bus size is 32 bits with a cache of 8. These are all introduced over the years till we get to the Pentium chip. The first Pentium chip becomes available in 1992 and it also um, sets the beginning that we're going to be using uh, either a socket 3 or a socket 4. The 486's are the 486DX is a uh, socket 3. When we move along to the Pentium we've got processor speeds of 100, 133, 150 and 166 these are maximum speeds. Pentiums range from 60 to 66, 90 to 100, and 120 to 166. They also had um, a data bus with a width of 64 bits and a 16-bit cache. Next in the Pentium line we've got the MMX technology which ranged anywhere from 166 to 233 with 32 bytes of kilobytes of cache and it also had 64 bits. We've got the Pentium Pro which had a range um, between 120 and 200 megahertz. After that we go to the Pentium 2 which had a range between 233 and 450. Also we've got an introduction of the Celeron which is a Pentium chip with with less cache so the cache in the Pentium in the Celeron chip would be from 0 to 128 and it's got 64 bits for the data bus. We can see here that we've got the AMD We've got the, it started with the K5, 8 times 86, and we've just got the AMD K7. And we see that the processor rate is 850 to 1.3 gigahertz. With a data bus size of 128 bits and a cache of 300, um, 364 kilobytes. When referring to the CPU, there's some terminology that often comes up. The first is the ALU, which is the Arithmetic Logic Unit. And what this is, this is part of the CPU that processes data. We also hear the term multitasking, and this is controlled by the operating system, and this is the part that divides the processor time accordingly depending on the tasks. We've got multi-processing, 
which usually increases system performance. This takes place whenever the system has more than one processor. We've got the register size, which refers to the size of the temporary storage areas that hold data before and after processing by the ALU. We've got real mode, which is the processor mode where addressable memory such as RAM is seen as linear storage local and cannot be divided into sections. And we've got a protected mode, which was introduced with the 286 computers and it allocates specific amounts of sections of memory to applications, multitasks, and it supports virtual memory. When talking about memory, there's two types of memory that we discuss. There's RAM, which is the random access memory, and there's ROM, which is read-only memory. We measure memory with memory speed, and that's measured in nanoseconds. And this is the time that the access data is stored in the memory. We do error checking with parity, and that's the simple error checking method where each data byte includes a ninth bit which is called the parity bit. And we looked at earlier that we've got memory banks and this is where memory must be in, is installed onto the motherboard. In the old systems it required 72 pin SIMs and it needed to be filled entirely. The newer systems require um, the DIMMs and that doesn't necessarily need to be filled entirely and the SIMs, as we talked about earlier, are the single inline memory modules. They can come in either 30 or 72 pins, and the DIMMs are dual inline memory modules, and they come in 168 pins. We're going to first go over ROM, and what this is, it's a non-volatile form of memory, which means that it keeps its memory even if there's no electrical charge flowing through it. So it's a more permanent type of memory than what RAM is. There's a few different variations of ROM. The first one is the PROM, which is programmable read-only memory. And when we refer to PROMs, that refers to the first ROM chips. And they weren't exactly um, adjustable. Uh, basically, whatever information that you entered into the PROMs was what stayed in the ROM, and you weren't able to make any adjustments to it. Next, we're going to talk about the EP-ROM, which is erasable, programmable, read-only memory. And this was designed to allow some changes to the ROM chips. And this is done through ultraviolet light. This allows the EPROM chip to be reprogrammed using a chip burner. And last of all, we have the EEP-ROM which is electronically erasable programmable read-only memory and this allows technicians to do a flash which is an electrical charge through the ROM chip to reprogram its code. Most current BIOSes have EEPROM and can be flashed while, the, while it's still connected to the motherboard. So it's important to remember that most current Motherboards do have EEPROM chips, and when you are converting it electronically, when you are changing what's on the chip, that's called flashing. Next, we're going to talk about RAM, and that's the random access memory, and this is volatile as opposed to the ROM, which is non-volatile. It's basically used to temporarily store data as long as there's a constant power to the RAM it does have is it is able to store data. We've got a few different kinds of RAM. Most commonly we've got the DRAM and the SRAM. The DRAM is the dynamic RAM and SRAM is static RAM. And there's some video RAM which is VRAM, WRAM, SGRAM. Below we've got a listing of the different types of DRAM and their speeds and the definitions of what the, the short forms mean. 
The most commonly kind of RAM is using the DRAMs, and we've got um, SD RAMs here also that are form of the DRAM. And we've just got the different variations of the RAM that's available. When we talk about RAM, we also talk about SRAM. And what SRAM is, it's a little bit faster than DRAM. It's actually four times faster than DRAM. It's also larger and more expensive. And it's used for speed critical functions like the cache. So in your cache of your computer system, more than likely it's using a form of SRAM. After that, we've got the VRAM, which is video RAM. And generally, it's um, used on high performance video adapter cards. It's got two data ports where one reads and one writes. After that, we've got the WRAM, which is the Windows RAM. And this is um, also dual ported, and it's slightly faster than the VRAM. And last of all, we've got what's called SG RAM. And this is uh, synchronous graphics RAM. It synchronizes with the system clock and it's single ported. When we look at the different memory packages, we've got the DIPS, which are dual inline pin packages, mainly used for um, ROM, for the EEPROM. We've got the SIPS, which are single line pin packages. These are all for, for ROM here. I'm just going to get back to the connectors for ROM. And then we've got the connectors for RAM where we've got the SIMS and the DIM. And we've also got one for the um, for laptops, which is mainly typical in laptops. And that's the SODIMM. And that's the small outline DIM. And this comes in 144-bit pin configuration. There are four distinct categories of memory. First of all, there's conventional memory, which is typically the first 640K of RAM. This memory is used by anything that runs in DOS, as well as device drivers and TSRs, which are Terminate Stay Resident Programs. After that, we've got 384K above that, which is conventional memory and it's also called expanded memory. This memory is reserve memory and is used for system devices and BIOS shattering. After that we've got high memory which is the first 64k above the first megabyte of memory. So after these two just above here we would have the high memory and this is used by DOS to preserve conventional memory. And anything above high memory area is used by Windows and it's called extended memory. It's used by Windows for data in protected mode. We've got a breakdown here of the upper memory where we've got 64K to 768K is for video RAM, 768K to 960 is for BIOS and RAM buffers, 960 to 1024 is for the motherboard and BIOS. And then just below that we've got ways that the system accesses the extended memory and the higher high memory.